Interior and posterior of this turtle. Uh, the first structure we're going to point out is the keratinized beak. It has a beak instead of teeth to tear apart its food. And the next structure it has is these external nares right here that lead to the internal nares. This is so it can breathe with its mouth shut. And then at the posterior end of the turtle, we'll notice a muscular tail that it uses to navigate the water better, as well as a cloaca underneath here that it uses to uh, excrete waste as well as uh, eggs and other things. So going to the dorsal and ventral sides of the turtle, we'll notice that it has a shell. And uh, the shell is broken up into three parts. We have the carapace, the bridge right here, and the plastron. So uh, the plastron, you'll notice that it has this shading right here. This is to break up the silhouette of the turtle so that way it's not easy to spot whenever it's swimming from the underside. <clears throat> And then we have the bridge right here, which connects the plasteron and the carapace. And if we just flip over to the dorsal side of the turtle, we'll notice that the carapace has this sort of pattern. This is useful in distinguishing the turtle from other species. And also along with this pattern, you'll notice that it's also segmented into these different parts. These are called scutes. They're made of sort of a uh, keratinized tissue. And these scutes are, they have names. These right here are marginal scutes, right on the outside. And then the most anterior scute is called the nuchal scute. And then we have these scutes right here. These are coastal scutes. And then we also have these right here, which are vertical scutes. <clears throat> and the plasteron, or the ventral side of the turtle, is also separated into scutes. Here we have what are called guler scutes. And then we have the, um, the humeral scutes, these are pectoral scutes, abdominal scutes, femoral scutes, and anal scutes. <clears throat> and some more adaptations that the turtle have are the scaly skin to prevent desiccation and abrasion from the wind. Yeah. And it also has uh, claws right here for digging uh, and laying eggs and things of that nature. And also one thing we'll notice about the shell is that the spine and ribs are actually fused into it. Uh, this is important because uh, it doesn't allow for their uh, insides to uh, expand like it normally would if you have a diaphragm. So instead of having a diaphragm, turtles use their neck and other limbs in order to uh, breathe or create that sort of uh, tension that you would need to inflate and deflate the lungs. And also, one more thing about the shell is that it is a calcium and magnesium carbonate reservoir, which buffers the blood. And this is important because uh, it allows a turtle to survive in anoxic conditions, which means that it, it won't die of a lethal uh, acidosis from not taking in oxygen. And it's actually been a notice that turtles can survive in temperatures of three degrees Celsius without oxygen for up to three months. This is where they eat their food. This is this pink tube right here is the esophagus. It's the muscle that pretty much pushes the food down into the stomach. The stomach is right here and this is what digests the food. The livers are right here and right here and those are the structures that secrete bile. And then this is the small intestine which ultimately is this long and leads to the large intestine. The gallbladder is this green looking structure right underneath here. You can see that, that is the gallbladder and that helps with digestion as well. The pancreas is the structure right here in this little flap area and that is kind of it kind of connects to the stomach and that also helps with digestion and that leads to the cloaca and the cloaca is where waste is dispelled as well as where reproductive structures or like eggs and stuff are dispelled as well this is the stomach once it's been dissected this is just the inside um, where digestive juices are um, expelled in order to help with di digestion.
So, so this is the heart of the turtle. It has a three-chambered heart. This is the left, right, right atrium, and then left atrium with one of the valves going through. As we can see on the model, there are the eight arteries and the veins. The arteries are going to the lungs, the veins are coming from the lungs. This is the vesicle, ventricle, and these two are the atriums, left and right. And we can see it on the small scale. Here are the veins back here. And these uh, are the arteries, and this small one right here, pale one, will be the ventricle, and these two would be the atriums, the left and right atrium. And this would be the ventricle and the inside, and then both the atriums. Um, thing is the trachea, and it goes into lungs down here. So near the posterior end of the turtle, we have these two structures right here, these reproductive structures. They're called the uterus. And uh, at the beginning of the dissection in the uterus, we found a uh, ventral to them, the eggs. And the turtle itself is oviparous, meaning that it lays eggs. And these eggs right here, uh, they have a membrane around them to keep the inside from desiccating or drying out, which is an adaptation that most uh, well, that all reptiles have whenever, you know, they came from the water onto land. And uh, here we also have something that doubles as an excretory and a reproductive structure. We have the cloaca. And if you just want to look inside, it goes from this outside to inside right here. And it helps uh, drop off the eggs as well as nitrogenous waste and other waste products. For the excretory system, we have the kidneys right here, and they filter out the waste from the blood, and they are, again, involved with just separating both of that. Here is the kidney on the other side. I don't know if you can see that, but it's kind of underneath all of this right here. It's in here. And then we also have the cloaca, and the cloaca is the opening at the end and that is what ultimately expels the waste out of the organism. We also have, it's kind of fallen apart, deflated, but this is ultimately the bladder. That's where they store their waste until they're ready to expel it. This is the alligator brain, and it's really similar to the turtle brain in structure. Okay, so going from the anterior to posterior region, first we have the olfactory sac and olfactory lobe. These are responsible for processing uh, scent, <clears throat> the next structure that we'll notice here is the cerebrum. The cerebrum is divided into left and right hemispheres and it's responsible for the five senses, so vision, hearing, touch, smell. <clears throat> and the next one we have are optic lobes. They're responsible for deciphering, deciphering visuals and they're really important for animals like turtles so that way they can look around for predators and find food. <clears throat> the next structure we'll see is the pituitary body. This is responsible for regulating the endocrine system. <clears throat> then we have the cerebellum right here, which is responsible for balance, uh, motor coordination, and muscle tone. And then the next section of the brain we have is the medulla, and it controls automatic activities like uh, breathing, blood circulation, heart rate. And then the next part that we have that actually runs along the anterior posterior axis of the turtle is the spinal cord. It's responsible for sending signals to the rest of the body from the brain.